It seems like a recession is almost inevitable at this point, but how is that going to actually impact the housing market? Well, we're gonna look at the data as usual and find out. Hi, I'm Josh Alexander, your host of Orange County Housing Market News, your one-stop shop for all things Orange County real estate. So like I just said on today's episode, we're gonna go over how recessions tend to impact the housing market so you can get a clearer picture of what to expect if we do go in a recession, which seems pretty likely at this point. So without further ado, let's Let's go ahead and get into it. So when I mention the word recession, what do most people think of? They think back to the last recession that can remember, which was in 2008, where we saw housing prices crash, depending on your market, from 10 to 20, 30, even 40% in some places. So a lot of homeowners are fearful right now because they're hearing the word recession more and more and more in the news articles they're reading, on TV shows they're watching, and they're scared because the last recession they can remember, they either were affected themselves or they know somebody that was affected by the last recession that lost their house, that had negative equity in their home, it was not a good situation to be in. So it makes sense that a lot of people get scared when they hear the word recession. However, I want to actually go over the data looking over the last five recessions that we had since 1980 to kind of show you a little bit different picture on historically what you can usually expect to happen during a recession in the housing market. So let's go over that now. If you're listening to this through a podcast, I apologize. Go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. That way you can see the graph. However, I'll try to do a good job walking you through this graph so you can understand it as well. So let's go ahead and check it out. So this graph shows the last five major recessions that we had in the U.S. economy going back to 1980. And as you can see here, three out of the last five recessions that we had, home prices actually went up. So in 1980, they went up by 6.1%. In 1981, 3.5%. And in 2001, they went up by 6.6%. In fact, we only had two recessions over the last five where we saw housing prices go down. And if you look at the one that was from 1991, they went down less than 2%. Now let's go ahead and look at the elephant in the room, which was the recession that we had in 2008. We saw that the average price home dropped about 20% throughout the United States during that great recession. Now the key difference in this recession compared to other recessions out there is this recession was primarily caused by the housing market. And that's something that you have to understand because if a recession is not caused by the housing market, typically home values are going up and the only time they went down when it wasn't housing related, it only went down by about 2%. So why did we see home prices crash so significantly during the last recession that we had, which was 2008? Well, like I said before, one of the main reasons is because the recession was caused by the housing market. However, how did we get there? Well, there's two big things. Number one was bad loan products. So whether the customer got an ARM loan, which was basically a introductory rate for your interest rate, which was very low. And then after a set amount of years, it adjusted up to whatever the current interest rate was. And that caused owners to be paying hundreds of dollars more every Every month when that rate adjusted or the other loan type which got a lot of homeowners in trouble as well which was nicknamed the ninja loan so no income no assets no job you basically just stated how much you made and how much of a home you wanted to purchase and a lot of lenders would just give you the loan for it so whether you can afford it or not they were just giving out loans so obviously this was not great loan practices and this caused a lot of people to get underwater on their house now the second reason speaking of underwater that we had such a big issue is that a lot of homeowners were just excited about how much their homes were appreciating. They were seeing giant appreciation numbers in their home every single month, month after month, year after year, and they started getting excited because they had a huge amount of equity in their house. So what did they do? They took that equity out and they spent it on things they wanted to spend it on. So whether it would be trips, RVs, boats, or if they wanted to make home improvements, they were taking out a lot of equity in their home to be able to do these things, leaving them with very little equity left over. So when we started seeing the housing market correct because of these loans, a lot of other people were going underwater because they didn't have any equity left in their house because they took it all out to do something else with it. And that's when you started to see all these foreclosures start hitting the market because all these homeowners could no longer afford to make payments on their home and they were underwater on their home as well. So that was the main culprit that led to such a giant downturn in the housing market during that last recession. So at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, haven't we seen that same type of euphoria with homeowners as their equity has skyrocketed over the last couple years? Are we headed for another cliff? We're gonna see a giant decrease in home values over the next couple years as well. 
The short answer is no. The housing market fundamentals right now are completely different and on much more solid ground than they were back in 2008. In fact, right now we have more equity in homes than we ever did in the history of the United States and both loan products and the people applying for loans are more well qualified and are much less risky than any time in the history of the United States as well. So if you're finding this interesting, I'm gonna be going over this exact topic, why 2008 is nothing like right now and why you shouldn't expect any type of giant market correction anytime soon in next week's episodes. I'm gonna pull out even more data and go into detail why this market is completely different than back in 2008. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and the bell button below if you're watching this on YouTube so you're notified next week when I release that episode, as well as every week after that when I give you different market advice as well as tricks, tips for both home buyers and home sellers to help you out in today's market. So again, if you found it useful, make sure you come back next week. Until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you on next week's show. Bye.